We are Casey and Tally Mize, and welcome to our crib. Come on in. This is Drogo. Yep. This is Drogi. Oh, Being shy. Decorated so, for Christmas. This is where the magic happens in the kitchen. Tally makes amazing food in here. She loves to cook, so she's got a nice, amazing kitchen where she makes awesome food. Furniture that re recently just got in, finally, after a long time. That's our traditional tree, and this is our special tree of ornaments that are just things that we like. So we have a lot of cats on here, obviously. <laughs> um, lots of wedding photos. We have a central perk because we love friends, sushi, wine, Santa with wine. Yeah, this is our bar we had made. So we have more wine glasses than anyone ever. I and mean, we have so many, but this is the wine section over here. I skipped your office. Oh yeah, we can go see the office if you guys wanna. I do a lot of work in here. A lot of important so things. Important. My office. Got him swinging. I'm gonna put a couple jerseys on the back wall there, but Got some cool art. This is called Jacob's Ladder. Um, it's from an artist named Daryl Thetford. Yep, local. Um, I thought it was awesome. A couple of th this is my first collegiate win versus Oral Roberts University. This is my this is a ball from my no hitter, March 9th of 18. This is our signed team ball from this year. Just kind of got everybody to sign that ball. And this is my first uh, major league strikeout. So I thought that one was pretty cool, so I wanted to hang on to that. I think my mom has the second one or something. Swing and a miss. Oh. Wow, there it is. This is, uh, this is Miguel's um, 500th home run, um, like a replica uh, lineup card. They gave this to all the team and staff and stuff, so I thought that was awesome. And the same for uh, Spencer's uh, no-hitter. Uh, and this is my First overall pick card that Rob Manford said when I, the night I was drafted. Um, I think that's pretty cool, so I hung that up in here. Um, and that's Tally's diploma from the best university in the world, Auburn University. This is our bedroom. Wedding photo, king size bed is a necessity. <laughs> no TV though. <clears throat> no TV, apparently there's like a stat out there if you have a king size bed and a a and a TV. And a TV, you're like bound to get divorced. It's a so. really high percentage, maybe like 70% so we divorce were. rate. So we had to compromise. I wanted neither, but Casey wanted a king size bed. I had bed. to have a king size bed. But no so. TV. Yeah. This is Drogo's house within the house. Yeah, he loves that thing. He, he sits in the hammock. That's his spot. Yeah, the hammock. His favorite. It's our first tub we've ever had. Yeah. Walk-in closet. Also our first walk-in closet. That's true. This is Casey's little portion. <laughs> yeah, this is my stuff. And the rest is mine. <laughs> everything else is Tally's, yeah. as it should be. That's all right. right. Yeah. Upstairs. Not much right now, but there will be a pool table here. That's why I got a chandelier and. It's a workout room right now. Yeah, I do. This is where I watch uh, football on Sundays and stretch out and foam roll and. Their gun and lay on a hot pack and just hang out. That's, uh, I didn't hit in college, but they gifted that to me after I threw my my no hitter in college. Um, I guess Northeast, yeah, Northeastern yeah, we March won. 9th. Yeah. Says. March 9th, well, my signature has changed since then, and my number it says number 32, I'm now number 12. But yeah, this was uh, one of the mini gifts that they kind of gave gave me after that, which I thought was pretty cool. So decided to keep that. But I never wore a helmet, never hit in college, thankfully. Yeah, not till you got the pros. Not until I got in the big leagues. And I did awesome. A great job. Well, as a most iconic bat Got on base, league. drove in a run, bat flipped. I mean, what more can you ask for than that? So, oh, here's a cool ball. I want to show you this. This is, uh, Calvin Johnson came out and threw out a first pitch this year. And he signed the baseball for me. Hall of Fame 21, Calvin Johnson. Outdoor area. This is 
is where we spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Getting some sun, watching football, eating dinner, grilling out. Yeah. Sitting around the fire pit. Casey's just kind of started learning how to grill. It's getting really good. We had good steak yeah. a few weeks ago. Still a long way to go there, <laughs> but um, I'm getting better. I'm interested in it, and I know it's something I need to, need to be good at. A dipping pool, big hot tub. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can heat it, um, which is what we normally do this time of year, but um, yeah, it's not truly a pool, I guess, but it's not a hot tub either. It's a little bit bigger, but it's just what I need. I don't need to swim laps or anything. I just need to get in to cool off, and it does the job, and that's it. Show the less busy way. Can we go right right here? Yeah, we'll probably... Do we need a minute to look over them? Um, Tyler, do you see anything you want? I kind of want some fish spread, fish too, spread? if yeah, we could. Sure. You want to do that? Yeah. Pinot Grigio. Yeah, this is a Pinot Grigio. Tyler actually got me on Pinot Grigio. I'm more of a red wine. Um, then we moved to Florida, and it's like warm weather, sunshine. You're like, you know... I think white wine is, is the move during the day, especially when you're at lunch or yeah, you know whatever yeah. by the pool. We we don't know near enough about wine for it to be a true hobby yet. Like we're like in the early stages of you know if you ask people who know a lot about wine, hey, how do I learn a lot about wine? They say, hey, drink a lot of it. So uh, season ended in Chicago. Um, straight to Mexico. Straight to Cabo um, with Tarek and Jess and Matt and Gigi. That was an adventure. Spent, what, four days there, ate a bunch of tacos, drank a little tequila. Um, that was a good trip. And then we came home for five days. And then we went to Costa Rica. For nine days. For nine days. <laughs> Would you like any hot sauce in for it? You need any hot sauce? I'm fine. I pretty much went on every road trip I mean, I'd say 75 to 80% of them I went on, so I love it. I am perfectly fine living out of a suitcase. I love change. I have no issue with anything like that, so I was always trying to come with. <laughs> we love just trying all the local places. Me and Jess went to Six Flags in Texas. Casey and I went to the Space Needle in Seattle. We've done a lot of really cool stuff. Tyler and I were kind of just like, we want to live downtown, we live right in the thick of it. You know, I can walk to the field, we get to enjoy all the local stuff, we want to support, you know, local businesses obviously, and kind of just, you know, feel what it feels like, you know, to really be a part of Detroit. And so, that was a pretty simple decision for us, and we are like, alright, let's do it. And so we, we, we found a place and um, an awesome building and an awesome location, we love it. You know, we eat at local restaurants and go get drinks at the local spots, you know, whenever we have, you know, some free time or whatever. But we found some great bars downtown. Yeah, there's a lot of hidden stuff downtown. Yeah, there can... really is. A lot of hidden um, little speakeasies and bars and places to just get a snack and a drink for yeah. the so many good spots. Whenever we get to do things like that, it's normally on day game Sunday, off day Monday. And so we're doing all these things on Sunday night and there's absolutely nobody out doing anything, but we're just like, this, is, fine this is the only time that we have. And yeah. it, it is enjoyable, you know, we get to hang out together and um, have fun, but it's like, man, I, I wish I could do this on a Friday night or Saturday yeah. night, but no, nope, can't, we're playing ball then, so. Um, Sunday night and Mondays is when we get to have our, you know, our fun and go eat restaurants we like and do things we like. Yeah. So we, so in spring training we found the house. March, we, right? We, yeah, but we closed on April 1st. Mm -hmm. um, so we closed opening day essentially. Um, and so all throughout the season, Tally would pop down um, plenty of times and ordered all the furniture and just did everything she needed to do to get the house ready. Um, and then so after the season, after Cabo, we came back and we had about half of our stuff because everything was delayed because of COVID, unfortunately, like the delays in the shipping and stuff is crazy. So yeah, like we ordered our stuff in mid-April and it's just now getting here. So yeah. uh, that was a hassle, but uh, she did a good job of, you know, taking care of it all. So now basically when the season ended, I rolled back to the house and, um, you know, didn't have to do much. She normally takes Thanks. care of all that stuff. So uh, yeah. One of the reasons we moved from Nashville is like we live in three homes a year. 
Nashville, and then we come here for six weeks, two months for spring training, um, and then we're up in Detroit. So it's like you live in three places a year. So we're like, we, I want places to feel like home and be like, I don't want a, that temporary feel. It's just I don't feel comfortable, and so that was part of the reason we moved here. And now it's we're here six months and Detroit six months. Like it's great. We had two separate Airbnbs last spring training. The spring training before our Airbnb was horrible, yes, but we COVID happened. Too long. Yeah. But COVID happened, so we got to leave early, which oh, is yeah. kind of like obviously COVID wasn't great, but we we're like, okay, we can get out of this crap hole. It Me, was not Casey, nice. and Tarek were roommates. Uh, no, Tally was definitely took care of us. Um, I did. I cooked so much. We actually invited them. Hey, if you want to stay with spring training for us this year, you come to that. We house. did. We haven't been taken up on it yet. Yeah, so. like, I, I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> a little fishy to me. Maybe he doesn't like us as much as we yeah. think. But as because Sarah and I lived together, uh, like uh, instructs the year before, uh, we had a little Airbnb too, and that was a blast. Like it was just me and him. We ate Chipotle every day and played video games um, all evening and all night, and then it took up too much of my time. And Tyler was like. You can't play. You don't no, need to do this. No, when we sold, when we sold the Nashville house, I put his PS4 on Facebook Marketplace and sold it for a hundred dollars. Yeah, she sold it like a hundred bucks, and I'm like, Tally, it's a tough one today. Yeah. Intensity, I'd probably say eight out of ten. Um, difficult, uh, but. In the phase that we're at, this is like the toughest week of what we're doing for phase one, and then next week is a deload, so this week's been pretty tough so far. Um, basically, we phase the whole off-season program. We start with, it's kind of a general preparatory phase. As guys come out of the season, they need a little time to recover, and then we just kind of reintroduce different movements, uh, kind of your standard upper body, lower body kind of stuff. And then as the season, as the off-season progresses, we start to do what's called a triphasic pro approach, where we do like a three-week phase of work, a deload week, and just kind of alternate the program pretty much right into spring training. And then in that, we also incorporate cardio strength, overall strength, explosiveness, mobility. So we kind of ingrain it into everything we do to kind of get the most out of that time. We kind of work with, with sports science, we work with the pitching coaches, we try to we create an environment where we're all speaking the same language and so if there's something that the pitching coaches want to address that, that we can weigh in on through biomechanic analysis and with our sports science and with everybody else and the athletic training department, honestly, like we, we want to take an approach where if there's anything we see we can address on our end and vice versa if we can give them information that way. So it's pretty state of the art. Uh, we've got everything we need to do under one roof. We know exactly what uh, the players' demands are in season, um, and so we can really, really hone in specifically on what the guy needs to work on, uh, on a very individualized approach. We can just build off things that we went through during the season and uh, do a lot of corrective stuff and do a lot of strengthening to prepare for next season, but they're familiar with me and my body and, you know, how it moves, how I work, and so they're, they're able to uh, be really efficient in our off-season work, and I think it's going to be a good, um, you know, setup and good off-season, so um, I think it'll just benefit me when it, you know, season comes around. Well, yeah, they have everything you need here. Um, you have good people here each and every day that are coming in here, not only to help you, but to help the organization. You do better, the organization does better. So everyone has that same common goal. There's no selfishness like, hey, this guy's trying to train for his career, his, his team. Everyone's here for one reason, to try to make the Tigers better. Alex, he's kind of the life of the party always, but um, it's good to see them, you know, that this guy's that I don't see during the season because, um, you know, a lot of them, or injuries or minor leagues or whatever. So it's good to see those guys. Uh, and I'm look, I look forward to them joining us in the future. Casey's been here so, since the season. I think he went on like, he had like a nice little vacation right after like the season. He's been in here every day working. Uh, just like how Casey is every day. He's got a plan. He does everything he needs to do. Yeah, it took about a three week break, which is the longest I've taken. Uh, we took a couple trips uh, to Cabo and uh, Costa Rica. And then I got back into it at the end of October. And then I think this is week four of training, or uh, at the end of, yeah, mid, mid of, of week three, and then, uh, but this is phase one, and I think we have three or four phases of the off season. Yeah, there you go. Oi, oi. With Casey, it's just a matter of little things. I mean, mechanically, he's really strong as a pitcher. His performance obviously speaks for itself that way, so it's mostly just taking what we've got and building off that. Uh, we do movement screens uh, between us and the athletic training department, so if there's anything that needs to be addressed there, 
We can do corrective exercises to help with that, um, but it's really just having a real team approach to getting the most out of what we can for Casey. He has his own routine. He goes in there, he starts with his feet, like rolling out his feet. You like just see like these little tedious things and he works all the way up his body. He has all these different programs that he likes before he throws. He has his throwing program that he likes. He knows that's good for him. And then after he has everything he needs to do in the training room, his shoulder program, all that stuff he has, he knows exactly works best for him which is nice because that's where you want to be as a pitcher so you can have that consistency. He's found his program, that's why he's been so good. Top shelf, like honestly, just really very much a go-getter. Uh, you basically showcase he's something one time and he's on it, uh, which makes my life a whole lot easier when there's a bunch of guys in the weight room. Uh, I just know that whatever's on his sheet to do, he's gonna make sure it gets done. I think you can look at it, um, you know, from a day-to-day -day standpoint, you know, check the boxes, you know, get done what you need to get done so you can, um, you know, go to sleep at night knowing you put in a good day's work and you prepared for uh, the season ahead. And then you can look at it from a long-term standpoint of, um, you know, if I don't do what I'm doing now, then I, I'm, I'm going to wear out in August, September, October. Um, so I'm, I'm keeping those things in mind during my work when it gets tough, you know, or when it gets monotonous um, because it, it really matters to stay consistent and work really hard because, you want to succeed when those times in the season come. So uh, I kind of go back and forth between do everything I need to do today, uh, but then also keep, keep the long term in mind as well.